Hey, good morning, everyone. Welcome back to the Midwest Plainsman. And this morning, I'm joined by uh, my special guest, uh, Thomas, who is also the, uh, basically, he's the associate director for the Wedding Pro, and that's powered by The Knot. And I want to bring him on this morning, and because we're going to be going over some important information that uh, they've already done the research on this as to what's happening with current trends. And we're going to be talking about uh, that and also uh, looking ahead into uh, this season and 2024, I believe. So welcome, Tom. Thanks for taking time out. Great, Earl. Thank you for having me. I'm so excited to be here. Um, I love going over this uh, study this time of year, real wedding study. Um, and the goal here is that you guys take away, yes, some statistics, but okay, what are we going to do with these statistics in order to, you know, attract more leads and, and book more weddings in the, in the wedding world there in the Midwest? Cool. Now, uh, I know that uh, you guys seem to be the leading experts in what's happening in the wedding industry. Because uh, I've known that over the years, since how I started off back in 2001 and uh, basically seeing the uh, magazines over the course of time and how things have changed uh, since then. And you guys really put out a lot of great information for both brides and vendors. Yep. So, yes, we, we, we try. You know, we're the largest wedding brand out there, that's for sure. Um, you know, the Knot and Wedding Wire merged about three years ago and, and became one big company. Um, and uh, with that, the power of the Knot and Wedding Wire, you know, we have well over 10 million couples uh, new every single month going into, into our sites. Um, we're very cautious, too. Like, if we don't have the couples using our site, we won't have the vendors using our site. So right. everything we do, especially part of this study, is are we going to continue to be relevant for the couples um, into the future and what do we need to change on our sites to be relevant because generations change time and time right. again. And then um, we share that information with, with, with our vendors so that they can continue to be relevant. Okay. Now, over the course of time, uh, have you folks seen like subtle changes or major changes in trends uh, over the years? I think trends, trends change subtly, subtly, um, you know, green, we're going to go through this presentation. Green is making appearance again, you know, um, metallics are making appearance again. Um, but what changes is, which we'll go over too, is the generation, how generations look at weddings right now. The generation Z is different than generation, you know, the millennials, of course, very, very different. How vendors respond to leads to Generation Z is very different than how they should be, re how they responded to, to the millennials. So there's more of a generation shift of, of how vendors need to adjust to the new generation and what their, what their ideals are, how um, you interact with them, uh, and how, how, you, how, you book, how you book these couples. That's what's continuously shift. In this Generation Z, there's a, there's a lot of change here on this one for sure. Excellent. Okay. Now, is, yes, I mean, speaking for myself in general, uh, I mean, I've done weddings where it's anything from the real traditional route to having things all in one area, uh, even doing, well, okay, now, Back when I first started, there's a couple of weddings where, yeah, they were holding it at like family farms or family homes to, and having the wedding out in the backyard. Right. Uh, so, I mean, it. I guess it just depends on how they look at things and if they want things to be really traditional or if they want to just kind of do a, a DIY. Correct. You know, the, the common thread here in Generation Z, um, which we'll go over, is fun. They want a fun and unique wedding, mm -hmm. something that represents themselves, something that represents family, something something that represents sustainability. 
Um, and that could be in somebody's backyard or that could be at the ballroom at the Ritz. Um, but the bottom line here, fun is that, that main key for this gener generation. Right. Okay. Well, let's go ahead and get into the uh, presentation here awesome. that we're going to be doing. Okay, great. Thank you. So, um, again, my name is Tom Chalednik. Uh, thank you, Earl, for, for having me here. I was looking forward to this. Um, and I worked at the not side for uh, about 13 years. And uh, I had many different jobs there. I was regional sales director, director of training, director of enablement. Um, and after 12 years, uh, I, I sit on a bunch of, sat on a bunch of boards for venues and I got tapped on the shoulder for a venue. I live in South Florida, uh, a venue about three hours from me saying, Hey, do you want to come up and be the CEO of our wedding venue? And I said, no, I'm good. You know, I make decent money. The perks are pretty good. And I thought to myself, well, that's stupid, Tom. You should really expand your brain here. Um, what I did, if there's not for those 13 years too, is I traveled quite a bit. I traveled about 70% of the year and I learned from wedding pros such as yourself, but I really enjoyed it. And I thought, well, what better way to learn than to jump in and actually do the business? So there's two um, Lux wedding venues up in St. Augustine, Florida. One is Leitner Museum. The other is Treasury on the Plaza. And I, I, learned, I learned from them for two years. And it, it was great. It was, unfortunately, it was right during COVID. So we really had to regroup and that even made my learnings even more. Mm -hmm. um, so, um, and then after two years, I came back to the knot and now I'm transitioning into this sort of like a field marketing position where I'm going to go out and talk and, and get our face and brand in the brand out there again. So, so I understand what it's like to be in your shoes a little more. Um, I know what it's like to deal with crazy couples. I know what it's like to deal with late payments and, and employees that don't show up for work and all of those things that go on with, with, with being a wedding pro, no matter what category that you're in, it's, it's, it's tough. So. Yeah, it sure is. Cause uh, I mean, I've done it all myself. Uh, just not only am I their DJ, but I'm also their minister, event planner. Uh, I've, I've done a little bit of everything over the course of time. Shoot. There's even one night where I had to set my system on autopilot and I had to jump in behind the bar and go bartend. Oh, geez. <laughs> <laughs> I bartended before, too. <laughs> That's the part of the, jo the job that I really liked is the bartending job for sure. <laughs> so, yeah, we do. We do. In this business, you got to do it all. But on, on today's agenda, we're going to talk about the top, top nine takeaways from our annual study. We're going to take a closer look at Generation Z, and we're going to look a little bit ahead into uh, 2023 um, and into 2024 at this point. So um, the Not Real Wedding Study, uh, we surveyed 12,000 couples married between January 1st and December 31st, 2022. And this is just, wasn't just like a, a three-question survey. This survey was like 11 pages long. It takes a long time to fill this survey out. And you think, why would somebody want to fill this survey out? Because they it's after their wedding and they still want to talk about their wedding. So... Uh, we represented couples from all over the country, various race, age, sexual orientation, gender identity, you name it. This is what this is what the survey survey said. Um, and it, it, it is the largest wedding survey that is done in actually the country or really the world. So. Um, so jumping into the snapshot of of the couples here, um, the average age, you know, female 30, males 32. 13% of couples were engaged two years or longer. That's not real surprising considering the pan pandemic delays. Um, a lot of them are meeting online. Um, Hinge is, is the most popular overall, though Tinder leads with the 18 to 24 year old crowd. Uh, again, that average month of engagement is about 15 months. That, that becomes important to you all as wedding pros because if somebody got married at Christmas and you're a DJ, you know, you're Booking season doesn't start in January, February. You're usually, for people got engaged in December, you start, your traffic starts, your lead start should be starting going up probably June, May, June-ish time frame. So again, that, that time frame. Um, and the other interesting thing is we're, we're seeing is 40% of different, uh, have different backgrounds with different race, ethnicity, and, re and religious beliefs. Mm -hmm. um, so that was the, the thrust of the, the, people who actually uh, responded to the survey. So, but as we know, 
you know, 2022 really marks a return to norm normalcy. I had I had two friends, one from New Orleans and one from um, Dallas last week, reach out to me and goes, Tom, what, what's going on? My leads are down. I have, I have openings in my bookings in the fall, which I never have openings. Even into early next year, I still have openings. And I said, you know, well, a couple things here. Um, first off, we're back to that normalcy. There was only 93% of weddings in 22 that had a change date, which is probably the people that aren't getting married anymore, you know, um, that sort of normal cutoff compared to 2021 that had 73% and the dates are changing because of, because of COVID. Um, the other thing is the lingering effects of the pandemic where um, guest counts went up and down. Uh, in 2022, we're almost back to that, you know, 2018, 2019, they're, they're, go they're going up again. Will we get back to that guest count of 150, 130, depending on, you know, again, this is a national average, depending on where you live. Earl, do you have big weddings out there in the Midwest? Do you have 200 people? Um, some of them, yes. Mm -hmm. um, the majority of the ones that uh, I've been involved in, You'd have anything from a range of maybe 150 on up to uh, 200. I think I've only actually had one where I had 300 people there. Right, right. So uh, in the Midwest, on the statistics, there's 141, which has the, the biggest guest count in, in, in the United States at this point. But, you know, guest count affects, you know, many, many wedding vendors out there, you know, catering, alcohol florist you know i guess as a dj you're gonna play songs to if there's 10 people show up or a thousand people show up but it really is affecting um uh profitability um for a lot of for a lot of wedding wedding vendors so you know we're gonna talk a little bit about how to possibly make some of that make some of that up so you know don't freak out your leads might be down um, this one venue in New Orleans, I said, go back and let's look at 2018 and 2019. And he keeps very good records. And his leads were almost exactly the same um, so far in, at the end of 2022 and into 2023 that they were in 2018 and 19. It's just back to normal. Yep. And I guess right now with the wedding groups that I belong to on Facebook, I've got, I'm in like five or six of them just for Iowa alone. And I'm seeing a lot of vendors still stating that they are still trying to fill dates for this year. Yep. Uh, and I know that that has changed because most of our photographers around here, they will have everything booked up solid uh, for, well, they would have already had things booked up solid for this year and in the next, but we still get vendors out there who are still looking for uh, to fill dates yet. Yeah. Part of that, we're going to talk about that, but part since you brought that up, I think it's a good, a good thing to talk about now. It's not, you know, yeah. So 2018, 2019 leads, it's back to normalcy in 2022, 2023. I, I, we get that. Um, but my one vendor friend, um, I said, well, what have you done changing the way you're responding to leads and how you're marketing yourself and your website, et cetera? Because nothing that worked for years. I said, but we're in a new generation. You can't continue doing the same thing. It's a totally different generation that expects different ways of responding, different follow-up paths, et cetera. You know, you, you, you know what's, if it's not working, you need, you need to change it. So we really sat down and we sat down and looked at his response time. Yes, he was responding quickly, but literally he was responding with seven paragraphs with six attachment. Doesn't work. I can't believe it even worked last year, but it truly doesn't work for this next generation. You know, we have an attention span of seven sections, seven seconds, which is less than a goldfish. And, you know, even me, when I get an email from work and it's like more than three paragraphs, I'm like, oh, my God, I, I read two sentences and I'm like trying to get, get through it. So, you know, we sat and we wrote all his, uh, his um, responses back and you keep them short and sweet. Um, you always end in an open ended question, something about their weddings. It could be, hey, we're obsessed with decor and colors. What, what, what theme are you thinking about? You know, an open ended question to get them to prompt. And this is the most important thing with this generation 
um, is you need to stay at the top of their inbox for 30 days. And that means you need to follow up day one, day three, day 12, day 16, day 24, 28, and 30, seven emails, you know, everybody, oh, the leads, my leads aren't getting back to me. Well, it's because if you are a DJ or a photographer, whatever it may be, that couple emailed four to six other photographers the same time they emailed you just the way it is because they're used to the convenience of finding photographers in your area. When they're going on the knot and wedding wire, they're looking, Oh, I like that one. I like that one. I like that one. I like that one. Boom. An email goes out. So when you only email once and that other photographer is, is staying at the top of their inbox for 30 days, you didn't get ghosted. You got lost in their inbox. Does that make sense, Earl? Yep, it does. In fact, uh, I've, I've learned that same thing because I do a lot of, business networking online and that is something that yeah we are constantly talking about right now yep i mean i i uh it's one of my biggest frustrations because you know we the not letting i have a lot of clients and we talk to them on a daily basis and i have access to their dashboards and i can go in and i can look you know i said to somebody on friday you don't have a lead problem you have a booking problem you know like that that's that's what it comes down to i mean if we've given you 420 leads in the past 12 months and you can't book any of those leads, that's a problem, you know? So right. we need to, we need, we need to dig, we need to dig into that. So it is, it is. And, and again, the generation and the, what we're coming off the economy and everything else, all these things are just bubbling up to where wedding pros need to more than ever before tighten up their belts, you know, and, and change their, change the way they're doing things. If it's not working, you know, if it's right. not working. So, and look inward and say, what can I, what can we, what can I do differently? So. Yeah. Cause I'm already thinking that, uh, I mean, things are picking back up again, but I'm still thinking it's going to take another year yet for things to truly get back to normal. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, what's the, what's normal now? You know, uh, it's, uh, it's, it's, it's a new normal, normal I should it, say. Yep. The economy is, is starting to really, I have a slide in here, I believe, about the economy. The economy is starting to factor into spends, rightfully right. so, you know, so, um, but, but, but this is, this is a good slide here. Um, more, th more than ever, uh, connecting with couples through video and photos give you a much higher chance of, of them s sending you a lead, right? So mm -hmm. uh, fun is the number one uh, up 11% since 2019. Everybody wanted a fun wedding, but this generation and even, you know, millennial millennials and they all want fun weddings. Yet time and time again, I'm seeing photos out there that aren't showing fun, the videos that aren't showing fun. They're connecting with these things um, visually and, you know, through, through hearing, um, yeah. get it out there. Right. Um, romantic um, is, you know, 33% of weddings want to be romantic, 24% want to be elegant, you know, and you, you can, you can go down the list here. So the takeaway on this slide is really show fun. Um, if you're a photographer, just don't show portraits. If you're a DJ, just don't show your backdrops and your, and your setup. Mm -hmm. You know, if you're a venue, just don't show empty rooms that are decorated. The first 10 photos on your website or on the knot and wedding wire and anywhere else that you're advertising are the most important photos. And you want to look at those photos and, and, and have your neighbor or something look at it and say, what do you think of when you see my first 10 photos? Talk to me about the couple that you think would respond to this. And is that who your ideal couple is? Yeah, because I mean, even on the groups that I'm a part of, uh, with the venues that I'm seeing that are putting out their announcements, ads, whatnot, is that. I mean, the first pictures I'm seeing, yeah, are their empty ballrooms that are decorated. Yep. I mean, that's the first thing I'm seeing. Yep. yep. I, and, you know, it's, it's frustrating, too, because, you know, the venues and all these other people, a lot of photographers aren't giving them photos, which always drove me nuts for 15 years. Like, if I'm a photographer and I'm at a, at a wedding, I'm going to share those photos with my watermark, of course, everywhere. You know, I want them to use my photos. Right. I, I get it. I get it. They're busy. I under, I understand <laughs> all that. But you know, you know, we'll. You know, my venue friend in New Orleans goes. I can't get the photos. I'm like, call the photographers that are always there, 
And you know what? If they're not going to share the photos, then maybe you, you know, reevaluate who's on your list. Yeah, it's, right. It's a partnership. It's a partnership. Yeah, so. it is. And you know, I've I've actually gone to photographers that have been at the weddings I've done, and when I know that they've taken pictures of what I'm doing, and I go to ask for them, they ask for my card and the address, whatnot. But I never see him. So I was like, I, well, so much for that idea. Yep. Yep. It's it's so it's so frustrating. It really is just frustrating. So for everybody, for everybody. But even photographers that have or taking the photos, they're not showcasing fun or they're show, you know, they're not showcasing the type of couple they really want to work with. So so on to moving on. Um, what couples are using to plan their wedding. 90% of planning is done online. That's not, that's not a, uh, you know, any type of revelation here. We know that mm -hmm. 73% are using wedding site apps like the Knot and Wedding Wire. 73% are friends and family, but even if they're using friends and family, they're still going online to do more research <laughs> in one way, shape, shape or form. Yep. Um, so Pinterest continues to be heavily relied on, especially for inspiration um, because Pinterest launched a, uh, a collage making app called shuffles which generation z is is, is really was really using mm -hmm. um but on these wedding site apps like on the knot and wedding wire for instance if if a couple message you messages you from the knot and wedding wire and it goes into your dashboard respond the same way that they are sending you that email or that lead because it keeps them in the um in their universe that keeps them in the app. Cause you know, when you have an app and you get a message on your, on your cell phone, you get a little number one, you have a message or number two, that's right. where they're, that's where they're um, planning their wedding from. Right. So as soon as you take it out of that um, and it actually in the not in wedding wire, the fun fact is if you respond in the app, it goes to their app and it also goes to their Gmail account anyway. But once you take it out of the app, it, you know, we can't track that. We can't, you know, share that we can't, uh, the, the couple doesn't see it in their app. So until you get a two-way conversation going, stay in the same form method of communication way they originally contacted you. Hopefully that's a phone, but that's a rarity. <laughs> yeah, that is a rarity. It's usually either via messenger or via email. Right, right. So, um, so stay in that app. Um, and remember, you gotta you gotta keep swinging that bat. You don't hit a home run every time you get up to bat. Sometimes you're up to bat six times, six times times three strikeouts, and then you finally get that home run. But stay in the top of that, stay in the top of that inbox. So, um, couples are having an average of four events in addition to the reception. Um, couples are really heavily involved in, in in the rehearsal dinner but parents and relatives oversee most of these other plannings for the shower etc but it, but an interesting fact here showers are on their way down 11% since 2017 and i didn't realize that day after brunches were on their way down also only 12% down since 2017 rehearsal dinners you know welcome drinks gatherings things like that so when you're looking at this uh, average of four events in addition to the reception as a wedding vendor what can you do as whatever particular skill set that you have to help them have a great rehearsal dinner? Or, you know, certainly there's plenty of planners out there that are planning bachelor and bachelorette parties, too. That's a, another big trend that I, I'm hearing more and more about. Um, engagement parties, welcome drinks, if you're engagement parties, if you're a DJ or a photographer, you know, et cetera. So think think through this. Not a huge change from the past, but. Again, I, I think there's revenue opportunity here as we as wedding pros leave on the table. Right. Yeah, I've even had couples uh, ask my opinion on uh, the groomsmen's gifts and the bridesmaids' gifts. Uh, I've even had a couple of brides uh, ask for my opinion on their wedding gowns. Right. So, yeah. I mean... <laughs> <laughs> it it really varies and i mean i'm honored when they ask me these things right so um and then when you look at the number couples hired average of 14 different pros for their wedding right so when you look at this when you look at this list 
Um, the majority say 61% said venue was their first choice, which, you know, even at my daughter's wedding, who I've been in this business a long time, we picked the venue and then we found the wedding planner. I don't understand why we did that. We should have had the wedding planner before we picked the venue and let the planner help us find the venue, you know, but like it, it, it just didn't work that way for me and, and many other, many other people. But when you look at um, this list of 14 pros and say that, say that you're a planner, 34% are hiring a planner, which seems low, but again, this is this national average, but 34% are hiring a planner, you know, what else can that planner do in this list? To, to help that to help that couple decor and lighting you know many planners are also florists or you know have a really close relationship to florists you know if you're a if you're a venue out there can you do a, an all-inclusive or a semi-inclusive package that's what we did at the venues I worked at where we included everything except for the florist photographer and officiant everything else came um, you know, the DJ, the cake, the decor, the wedding planner. Um, and we made it easy for the couples um, to plan their wedding there. They didn't have to, if they just wanted to rent the space, you know, I always call it uh, the, what's the word, not ease of planning, tolerance for planning. Some have a tolerance of want to do it all. Like just give me the space and I'll do everything. Someone's in the middle where we created a eat, drink and be married package. Meaning you got the space, you got the food and you got the booze. And then we had a, that all semi-inclusive package too. So, but when you're looking at this list and we know if weddings are going back to normal as far as number of weddings for 2018, you know, 2019 timeframe. And we know that economy is, is becoming, economy problems are becoming an issue with budgets and things. What down this list or what other products and service can you offer to that couple um, to help them and also increase your revenue? Right. Now, over the past years, uh, when I'm first meeting with my clients, uh, the one thing I've always told is, I mean, the one thing they do ask me is, when should they be looking at getting their venue? And I've always told them, right when you have your date set, when you've decided on the date that you want, then you need to book your venue. Because in the past, most venues have been booked out at least a year in advance. Absolutely. But this year, for some odd reason, I'm still seeing some venues that still have openings for this year. And they're still looking for uh, brides to fill those dates. I'm like, what is going on? Yeah. Yeah. I, I, I'm, I'm seeing the same thing. My venue, my venue friends all, all over the country, the fact that they have a September date or an October date still available is, is a little scary. And I, I think that's, that's part of just the new normal. We're back to normal. And the other part is a lot of these people haven't changed what they're doing. I mean, I, I see that time and time again, you know, as far as what products and services they're offering, you know, price points, you know, where they're marketing and advertising, how they're marketing and advertising, how quickly they're getting back to people, you know, all of those things add, add up to it. Are there still a ton of weddings out there? Absolutely. There's a lot, there's enough weddings to go around, you know, um, but they're just not connecting the same, the same way sometimes. And, you know, as a venue, especially, right, you know, here we are in, you know, where are we, April, you know, if you're going to try to book a wedding this year, that's, you know, still in the year for the year, every day that goes by, there's a less percent chances you're going to get that in the year for the year. So you better, you know, feed on the street and say, shout out to the rooftop. We still have availability in September, October or whatever your availability is. Right. So um, the other, the, you know, budgeting remains. It's still a top challenge for couples across the board. Um, and the slide, the little graph at the bottom of this year, percent of saying budget planning was impacted by the economy. So in 2021, it was you know full year, 38% said the economy was impacting me. Um, in the first quarter of 2022, 39%, second quarter, 49%, third quarter, 52%, and fourth quarter, 54%. So the economy is absolutely pay, play, pay, playing um an important decision on how many people they have, where they're going to have the most bang for their buck, et cetera, et cetera. 
A couple will say one couple really loves flowers. That's their thing or flowers, flowers, flowers. They'll find the money for flowers, but they still, they don't have an unlimited budget. They're going to, they're going to cut somewhere else. You know, it might be, mm -hmm. you know, less time for photographer or, you know, less choices for food or just do beer and wine instead of a full bar, whatever that is not changed. That, that historically hasn't changed year over, for years and years. But the economy absolutely is starting to make an impact um, and it's going to continue to make an impact, unfortunately. Mm -hmm. That's so, true. You know, one of the takeaways here are individualism continues to shine through through couples that want their wedding to be unique. Right. Um, they want to highlight their wedding through food and culture and religion. Um 57% have honored their family that couldn't be there in a certain way, you know, and how you take this is like, do you, have you seen something really cool that honors family member at their wedding? If you have share that unique idea with a couple partner with that couple, even during the lead process in your follow-up process, Hey, I saw this really cool idea, even if they haven't responded back yet, you know, in that third follow-up, you know, be helpful to them, right? Show that you care, show that you're willing to, um, share, I share ideas, um, themes, themes, and more themes, uh, continue to be, you know, I've never personally seen a Taylor Swift in the cats theme. I don't even know what that is, uh, what that, what that would look like, but we certainly are seeing, you know, the, the, some of the themes, the warring twenties theme, the star Wars theme, you know, one thing that's, I think is cool on here, sunflowers or theme, you know, they're meeting on dating apps and bumble. So bees and sunflowers, you know, the Bumble dating app, bees and sunflowers were, were big at weddings in 2022. And we're seeing that in 2023 too. So takeaway here is be helpful. If you've done something cool, you have a cool idea, unique idea in themes or the way to incorporate themes or, or, you know, locally sourced products is, a, is, a, is another big one. Share that with a couple part with them. And you're more likely to get a response in a, in a, in a, in a two-way conversation going. Yep. In fact, uh, I'm talking with one couple right now that uh, they are, they're going to be doing a 70s theme. Yeah, I love it. I, I, do. I mean, that's, you know, that's almost right down my alley. Yeah. <laughs> We're showing our age. Yep. <laughs> Absolutely. What, what old, what's old again is new. So top trends, what's gaining momentum um, unplugged ceremonies grew 23% over the, the past five years. Not surprising. There's signage everywhere. Signature cocktails and food options continue to grow. What is down? Not as many couples are doing favors. And not as many couples are doing uh, hashtags as, as, as they were five years ago. Mm -hmm. um, wedding, par wedding parties wearing all the same outfit and design. Um, I'm, I was surprised that's only down 19%. Um, I'm seeing more and more weddings that come in and real weddings that rarely am I seeing things that are all, you know, wearing, wearing the same colors. So, so I look at this too, and I look at revenue opportunity as a wedding professional, right? Like if I know that request, you know, most people are requesting an unplugged ceremony, how are the couples actually, you know, sharing unplugged? Well, they're getting signage. Earl, you seen a lot of signs at weddings there in the Midwest? Um, not really. I mean, I think the last one that uh, I was involved in that we actually used signs. I, uh, I wasn't even a vendor. I was there to support my best friend. Mm -hmm. And a bunch of us wound up uh, standing in the back and we each held up a sign. <laughs> mm -hmm. Well, that's that, <laughs> um, interesting. Signage is a big Big thing. Couples are spending a lot of money, money on signs from arrows to unplug to seating assignments to wherever, you know, look at to see how easy it is to create signs outside service. Create. Maybe maybe offer signage service, you know, um, you know, food options. You know, I think caterers do a good job with food free, uh, gluten free and, you know, vegan options and things like that. Um but if there's certain things that are, you're seeing as a planner or a venue, you know, well, grab some of that decor and rent it to them. 
Look for revenue opportunities everywhere you can dig up revenue opportunities. If the money is going down a little bit or getting a little tighter, they're getting a little, you know, holding on to a little bit more, mm -hmm. give them an opportunity to open up that purse string and, and give you some of that money. I, I personally, at my venue, I would be doing um, some sort of sign package for it because the amount of signs that came through that venue, you know, though I went to a wedding three weeks ago, three weeks ago, there were signs everywhere. I asked the mother of the bride, um, how much did you pay in signs? $2,800 for signs. She paid more in signs than for linens. So you can make your own signs for cheap. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, it, it, mm. You know, I've always told people that you don't, I mean, there are certain things that you don't need to break the bank on and signage. I mean, yeah. I mean, if you want to have the, the fun calligraphy or whatnot, uh, more power to you, but right. I mean, you can make up signs yourself and still have them look good. Yep. You could, you could. But if they don't want to pay the $2,500 and I can make $500 on it, I'll send out for your signs. I'll do it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You know, if you do, if you do, you know, 10 weddings a year that have, and you're making $500 on signage, that adds up. You know, yeah. Adds it up. Does. So green was a top color choice in 2022. Continues to see, we continue to see that grow through 2023. Mm -hmm. um, metallics, gold, silver, or bronze. 53% of the couples are using these colors. So how do you use this, right? You would think that, you know, well, I'm going to, if even if you're not seeing these colors in the Midwest at this point, um, probably are though, they're online looking at trends, looking at Pinterest, looking all through the knot, you know, real weddings and all that stuff. And they're seeing these colors. So get a few photos of these colors on your website. You know, blog about colors, do something about colors and, and, and things like that. So, again, you're connecting with them that they're more likely to send you that lead. You know, you got to You got to have engagement within your website. You're not in wedding wire storefronts, wherever, wherever you're advertising mm -hmm. um, and showing the things that are trendy gets you that engagement. Yep. Because over the years, uh, I've done something different than a lot of other DJs don't do, but. I take candid photos at every single one of my weddings. And the majority of those photos are of pretty much every deco that I'm seeing mm -hmm. so that I can present those pictures to my future clients to give them ideas. Perfect. That's perfect. You're showing help, right? So in your follow-up emails, you should throw through those few throw a few of those photos in there for sure. Mm -hmm. You know, especially if you're doing a lot of weddings and every wedding in the same ballroom, for instance, it's the same ballroom, but every wedding has something unique about it. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? There's something that's cool um, about it. Maybe it's just the way they set up the ballroom, you know, like mm -hmm. one time we, at our ballroom, we set up the ceremony in a circle. Um, and uh, we, it's, it's done a million times. We've just never done it at all, done, done it in our ballroom. It was our number one Instagram like post of the year, our Facebook post of the year. Um, and then we're, then we're like, Hmm, okay. Do we, can we upsell this circle setup? <laughs> you know, how can we make money on this circle setup? We right. did, but I'm a, you know, I would have liked to for sure. So what does all this mean for your business? Basically couples just want to have fun. Um, show them fun in your photos and videos, um, in, in your in your social media. Um, it's again no empty ballrooms, no not. I mean, you need to have some portrait stuff and some big shots mm -hmm. of the ballroom. But you, they they want fun. When you look at this picture on the left hand side here, I mean, it's just fun, right? There's so much fun about that fun about that photo, in particularly into this generation. Um, the other thing is you want to be transparent with your pricing. Um, right from the beginning, there's this big controversy in this in the wedding world that we, you know, they don't like to put pricing on their on their website. That's a whole nother podcast. But, you know, think through yourself. If you're looking for a product or service, what are the two things that you're most looking for? I'm looking for price, number one, and then I'm looking for availability. Are they can they do the time that I want? And then I'm also looking for reviews. But again, that's that's the second podcast that we could do right. um, just on reviews. But 
And the other big takeaway, 90% of planning is done online. So make sure your digital presence is working over time for your business. You know, make, make, you know, with photos, videos, content, et cetera, et cetera. So having said that, we're going to move in quickly to generation Z and take, take a, take a deeper look here. Um, so generation Z turned 25 in 2022. So at this point, the oldest person in generation Z is about 26. This is the generation um, that is of getting of marrying age. This is the one that now you're, you're looking at closer, you're readjusting how you're responding, readjusting your digital uh, footprint, et cetera, colors, you, you name it, you're, you're re-looking at this. Um, the interesting fact, Gen Z here were about 10 years old when they had their first iPhone, when the first iPhone was released. So they really don't know a life without an iPhone. So again, that's why over 90% of people are playing their weddings, weddings on, on, on their phone. So we know that, right? But yet we still send emails with attachments that the phone can't open because you got to download something or you're scrolling, you're scrolling, you're scrolling, you're scrolling, you're scrolling. Mm -hmm. You know, you, you send the brochure that has 17 pages in it. Again, attention span of a goldfish. That's not just Generation Z. That's everybody. Nobody's going to go through that. Then they never reply back. And then all of a sudden you have a, a booking problem. <laughs> right. So um, important to always email yourself to let to find out how people are um, uh, receiving your emails. This is just some statistics here. Gen Zs are 48% non-white versus 39% millennials. 72% acceptable to have a baby outside of marriage. Actually, in this, you know, this was an Instagram post um, or TikTok, TikTok, I'm sorry, that had, you know, within the first month had 373,000 likes. Um, it's a pregnancy wedding dress. And 21% were LGBTQ plus. So cool. The oops, wrong way. Um, I found this slide very interesting. Okay. 63% of parents are paying for a big portion of the weddings for Generation Z, more than any other generation, if you look at the bottom of that slide. Okay. Not surprising, right? Like my daughter is right at that cusp. She's a millennial, but but we paid for the majority, if not all, of her wedding. Um, but how if we know that parents are playing a bigger factor in the weddings, especially paying for the weddings, we need to show the parents some love, right? So recently I've been seeing more and more websites out there that have a tab on it. For parents and relative parent relative slash FAQs, you know, just list of things, you know, could be it could be um, traditional FAQ questions like who pays for what or how you cater or what do you do for the parents and the relatives, whatever that may be. Um, but it's just not over not over produced. But at the bottom, a few of them, the people that had uh, you can pay online, it had links to payment information too, so the parents can actually pay. So I don't know, Earl, are you seeing more parents being paying out there? The majority of them, yes. Yeah. Uh, I have seen that, yes. Yeah. I mean, when you look at even millennials, you're looking at 52%. You know, so it's not a new um, idea for many, many years. More parents are paying for things. Um, however, what are we doing um, to connect with the parents? Because a couple maybe found the photographer, DJ, whatever it may be. But then, you know, the parents are smart enough that they're going to the website and they're taking a look. So you need to connect with that, that parent, too. You know, if you're a venue and many parents are coming on the tours, you know, yes, you're, the majority of your attention is on that couple. However, bring in the parents. Ask questions to the parents. You know, get the parents involved in that tour. Ask them, what do you think? You know, what would you, what would you do in this space, et cetera, et cetera? So yeah. with that. In fact, uh, this year, I've already had initial contact with the mothers, uh, the mother of the brides. Okay. And they're the ones who are reaching out and making first contact and then sending the information and telling the daughter, hey, you need to get in contact with this person. Yep. 
I, we're we're seeing that too on our inquiries on the knot and wedding wire too. Hey, I'm the mother of, or the father of, or the sister of some, some relative more than more than ever before. But certainly, certainly a lot of, a lot of parents. So theme one um, for generation younger Gen Zs, they're all about the moments and capturing the moments. Okay, more taking engagement photos. That's up ten percent. Um, I love this statistic because I've been married for 31 years. Thir wow, my anniversary is this, this week, actually. 32 <laughs> years. <laughs> and um, uh, we had video at our wedding. Now, granted, it was a big clunky camera, you know, um, but it is the most important thing from our wedding that we look back upon 30, 30 plus years later, you know. So I, I was always a proponent of video. And we're seeing more of this generation want video, which I think is great. Yeah. Um, and part of it is because their parents probably had video, <laughs> you know? So like my parent, my kids watch mom and dad's wedding movie. If they were being bad, we'd throw that wedding movie in and then watch it for hours, especially my daughter. She'd watch it for hours and hours, you know? So when she got married, video was just normal to her, right? She, of course, we have to have a videographer, you know? Photos were important too. Of course, we had to have that videographer. So... Capturing and sharing the, sharing the moment. So again, be helpful to your clients. Tell them unique moments. Make sure that you're working with people that are capturing those moments, for photographers especially, that are capturing those moments for, for the guest. This stat is an interesting stat. 78% 70, 70 use a guest book at a reception. You know, maybe you offer a free guest book to get them to sign this month. You know, something is that's going to cost you 20 bucks in order to get a signature this month, you know, whatever, think out of the box there and look for revenue opportunities. Mm -hmm. Yeah. In fact, his, uh, and <laughs> the majority of videos that kids see from their parents or back in the days of using the big VHS camcorders. Yep. yep. And so they're on VHS tape and, the majority of them, uh, the majority of this generation, they take one look at those things and what do I do with this? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, videos are much different now, too. Thank goodness. I mean, my video, you know, it has the whole ceremony, which was an hour and 20 minutes. It's four hours of the reception. You know, nobody wants to sit there and look at it. Even I don't want to look at all of it anymore. But but now the videos are their snippets and they're the trailer, you know, three minute version, a 10 minute version, a 40 second version. I think it's I think it's great. You know, the technology has gotten so much better and videographers are so much, they're like movie people now. You know what I mean? It's its fantastic. So yep. Gen Z wants to make that statement, right? They want to entertain their guests just like every other generation want to enter, entertain their guests, but they want to surprise them and delight them with something. So grand entrances, right? So if you're a venue or you're a planner or you're a DJ, whatever you are, and you have, you, you saw some really cool grand entrances, or ideas of great entrances, share that with them. You know, at, at the venue I worked at, you know, they historically they would just walk through the, the beautiful doors and that was the grand entrance. But we also had a vault in it. It used to be a 1920s bank and there was a vault in it and the bar was inside the vault. So somebody smarter than me came up with the idea of, oh, let's, let's hide the bride and groom or the couple into the vault before everybody shut the door and before everybody comes in, um, everybody's seated and then they, you know, came out through the vault and that was an upsell, <laughs> you know, because there was logistics to be able to do that. Um, so think through that 41% included ethnic or religious or cultural events. And again, back to those, back to those vibrant, vibrant colors. So making a statement for this generation is, is important. Showing that through photo, video, writing, blogging, social media, um, is, is what we should be doing as wedding pros. The theme three, embracing technology. Again, they've grown up with that at their fingertips. Um, technology is everything. If you don't have videos on your website or platforms like the Knot and Wedding Wire that showcase your service, showcase you, showcase like leaving video reviews, I've seen plenty of those lately, um, get them on there. 51% of them are watching videos. I'm sure that, and that's probably a low number in my mind. The other thing is chat. You know, 40% use online chat to speak with pros. That's up 10% from millennials. We believe that this number is going to continue to grow. Um, 
you know, there's plenty of chat options out there free for your website. I know that it's difficult at times to manage that, but when you're online, you're sitting at your desk, throw, throw on the chat and see what you see what you can get going. There's also AI out there for chat and things like that, but certainly something to something to look at. Cool. TikTok. Um, TikTok is a go-to for Generation Z. Uh, more than any other generation, this tool is used 47% of the time. And this is where this generation can feel like they're honest, get their get fun ideas where people are true to themselves because it's small little snippets. Um, and there are so many wedding planning TikToks out there. It's insane. Um, TikTok's a little scary at times if you haven't done it. But once you do it, it's just like anything else. You just get, you just, you know, you just start talking into your phone and, and, and doing, doing a TikTok. If you want to connect with them, this is a place, this is a place to be. And it's going to continue a place to be, you know, through the next, five years until the next something who knows what's going to come up next. Are you doing any TikTok, Earl? Uh, yeah, a little bit. Um, I, myself, I have been posting a lot of short reels on like Instagram and Facebook. Yep. So now let's get those more on TikTok too. <laughs> you know, it, you got, you got to look to see where your ideal client is. You know, right. if your ideal client is on Facebook at this point, which we know would be an older couple, um, then do it there. If they're, you know, if they're on, Inst you know, millennials, Instagram, Gen Z, certainly, certainly TikTok. Gotcha. So in general, what's this mean for your business? You know, Gen Z is diverse. They're non-traditional. Um, they're thinking they're seeking really fun things. Um, they want to make those big statements you know, they're partnering with people to help them have a fun wedding that shows uh, individuality, shows, you know, sustainability, shows statements. So is, 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 that, is that you? Um, the one thing on here, too, is promote that you're able to do Zoom consultation or virtual tours. Um, again, I'm not seeing a ton of that on websites across the board. You know, would love a phone call, you know, would love a Zoom, you know especially this generation, you know, through the pandemic, Zoom has just become normal. And they're working now. Lord knows, you know, we're a worldwide company and we're all on Zoom every day. You know what I mean? We're doing this every every single day from from our from our from our houses. So it's just normal to them. And and don't forget and don't forget TikTok. Yep. And the one thing that uh, the one change that I've made because over the years, uh on the initial meeting, I would meet with them face to face. But this year, the first initial meeting, I'm doing uh, I'm doing video sessions. Yep. Because it just makes things easier for them, mm -hmm. and that way, if they've got busy schedules, then it works better for them to do a video conference than to actually take the time to come out and meet me face to face. Yep. And they're just used to it. Just the way they, we're all used to it. Not just that, we're all just all used to it at this point. Right. Not a good, bad, or indifferent. It is, it is, it is what it is, you know? So a quick look into 2023. Um, the most popular day to get married will be Saturday, September 23rd. Uh, this makes the first time in over five years that that top date didn't occur in October, right? So September, everybody should be booked on this date already. Oh, yeah. I've got the 23rd and the 30th already booked. <laughs> there, there, there it is. Couples are drawn to dates that have that matching numbers, 23 and 2023, which was also the case of the prior year. October 22nd uh, was the other highest was the other highest date. So, um, again, I'd be remiss of not talking about looking ahead into 2023. 69% said keeping costs within budget was a top challenge and 49% specifically noting the difficulties due to economy factors like inflation. That's just the way it is. Guest counts, uh, the average guest count across the, across, this is again, across the United States, 115. Um, trends again, how can you make money on these trends? Signage, colorful attire, last dance, et cetera. Um, Couples are going to be a lot more thoughtful about spending money in 2023. 39% of all couples are trimming their guest lists 
and cutting, cutting roughly 25 guests on average. So if we know our guest count is going down and your, your make your revenue is based, you know, on get, guest count, where can you make, where can you make some of that up? Mm -hmm. Then. So what does this all mean for your business? Um, again, it just really means look for opportunities to connect with this generation. If you're not booked, look for opportunities to change what you're doing as far as your follow-up process. I know that many of us wedding pros out there, many of you wedding pros out there are one or two people. And you're thinking, how in the heck do I have time to share, you know, follow up seven times? There's software out there. Um, that actually that actually does that for you. I started a little side business. I'm in the wedding business over here, but I'm in the death business on my side business. It's called farewellit.com. And it's basically just digital forms to download your life celebration, to plan your life celebration. But I'm a one person shop, right? So mm -hmm. I have, I found software called Flowdesk, F-L-O-D-E-S-K.com. And mm -hmm. you, you build your templates. And every time I get an email from somebody that, downloaded one of my free resources but didn't buy yet i put them in my email workflow and then over the course of 35 days they, they get seven emails it's just automatic right you gotta you gotta and it's not expensive flowdesk isn't expensive so think think through that think how you're changing how you're reaching out to reaching out to your reaching out to your couples but it, budgeting is a top concern we know that um when you receive that infamous pricing question emphasize the value that you bring to the table and that's why they should say yes to your service. If you just simply say, I'm a DJ and you get 10 hours or five hours or whatever it may be, that's not enough. What are the other four bullet points or five bullet points that you bring you bring to the table with them? And they're looking for value. They're willing to go above budget if they believe you're they're getting more. Mm -hmm. so. Yep. That's the way I've always looked at it. Because that's the reason why I I offer more services. And for at a very affordable rate. Right. Right. So um, again, my name is Tom Chalenic. Please, anybody here, just email me. Um, this is my address. If I can't help you, I'll find somebody that can help you. If you have any types of questions on this real wedding study, just let me know. Um, and Earl, thank you for thank you so much for having me. I mean, we took an hour, man. <laughs> <laughs> well, I kind of figured that was the route it was going to go, so I was all prepared for it. And uh, yeah, I definitely wanted to spend time and uh, have people like you be my guests, and that way, because uh, it can benefit not just brides but also. Uh, all of us vendors, because uh, right now, uh, like I said, I wind up seeing every single vendor in, well, not just my area, but all across Iowa who are constantly uh, putting out ads to fill dates and just... Uh, like I said, I am seeing trends where uh, not all of us are booking up dates right away, which we, I know the majority of us are used to doing. Mm -hmm. uh, I remember time back a few years ago where, yeah, I'd wind up having uh, my almost my entire year booked solid by mid-May, June, July. So it... Times have definitely changed. Time, time, times are changing. The other thing, you know, that lead that ghosted you two or three months ago, go back and send them another email saying, hey, checking in, making sure this my message didn't go to spam. Are you still looking for a DJ? Are you still looking for this? You know what I mean? Like mm -hmm. swing the bat again, you know, even if you've already emailed them seven times, swing the bat again. My the number one email that works for us, and I see this across the country. I, I always called it the last ditch email, and I always thought, why are we sending this first? It's like, you know, it says the subject line would say something like, I'm worried about you. So, and then it said, Hey, I've sent you a bunch of emails, tried to connect with you. One of the three things have one of three things have happened. Number one, you're no longer getting married. Oh, that's sad. Number two, you found another DJ 
Well, that's great for you. Who did you use and why? Or number three, wedding planning, you have, wedding planning just has you overwhelmed and you're binging Netflix. What kind of popcorn would you like to, us to send? Microwave or stovetop, right? right? So it's showing personality and it was the number one response. You know, people get a little iffy. I don't want to think, I don't want to say that, you know, you're maybe no longer getting married. You have nothing to lose. You sort of want to shock them right from the beginning, mm -hmm. you know? So at least make an email up like that for yourselves and throw that out for all those leads that haven't, haven't gotten back to you. And then email me and let me know how that goes. Cause I'll promise you, you'll get responses back. Some will be like, I've been traveling. I'm you're right. I'm overwhelmed. I'm sorry. You know, I booked something either way. You want some sort of response back. Excellent. All right, Tom. Well, I do appreciate you taking time out to uh, come join me this morning. This has been very informative and helpful for uh, not just me, but I know that uh, <laughs> it's definitely going to be uh, helpful for a lot of others. Great. I appreciate it. Thank you for your time. And I look forward to meeting your audience someday. Give me, give me, give me an email and I'd be happy to do this again if, you, if you'd have me. I appreciate the, appreciate the opportunity. Not a problem because I know that uh, there's going to be a lot more topics that we can cover. Oh, uh, wow. <laughs> <laughs> so we'll definitely do this again. Okay. Thank you, sir. Have a great day. You as well. Thanks for coming. Appreciate uh, it. You've been okay. listening to another edition of the Midwest Plainsman and powered by Nightwolf Event DJ Service here in Waterloo, Iowa, where uh, I am Iowa's complete wedding day service provider with uh, DJ, minister, event planning, day of coordination, and a whole heck of a lot more that we do right here at Nightwolf. So be sure to take a look. And uh, if you have questions, feel free to email me directly. Message me on Facebook under Earl Silverwolf Williams. Um, and in the meantime, we'll see you again later on down the road. Uh, I'm looking forward to uh, doing my first wedding of the year. Uh, next month on the 13th which is in three weeks so i'm getting excited for that one so hopefully we'll see you out there have a great day folks and uh we're gonna be back again later on and uh, who knows we're gonna be bringing on more professionals to uh, answer everybody's questions have a great day everyone pleasant journey <music>